I was just trying to show you that the need is that we we'll always have to have human beings to do the work. You don't. There will be a time when very few people can operate everything in the continental United States. And the rest of the people go on vacation, swim, yachting, camping, shoot pictures, study chemistry, go back to school, music, travel, anthropology, conferences, etc. So that work, we find, would be boring, repetitive, and you don't learn anything at work because it's uninteresting. And so I'm trying to say to you that if you understand these mechanisms that are coming, the future, the present doesn't look too good. The present only looks good because we don't know what the potential of the future is. It's just like your grandfather when he got his little sewing machine that he worked with his feet and the pump that brought the well water up, he really lit a cigar and he says, this is it. But you had to go down before that and get the water from the river, bring it into the buildings and pails with a brace across your shoulder, you know. And when they made that thing, somebody said, no, they, they've gone too far, you know, even with the pump. Thing. So today you just turn on the faucet and you got the water right there. But where is all this going? What is this doing for man? And what enables us to get out of these ruts that we're in by looking at the present world and say the present world has this and so on, but it isn't the best of all possible worlds. You have to get away from that idea of utopia. That even if we went out and built the world that I want to build, you know, that would be the beginning of the next phase. Because ten years into that world, the kids that grow up in that system will look at that world as all an old fucking Prescottian building that were around. You know, they're out. Here's the new way. See? There's no utopia, no finality, that man has an infinite journey into change. Now the idea of thinking of an ideal world where there's no war, and all, that's good. That's only the beginning of the next phase. You see what I mean? So people become very different, their values become very different, and that's what ought to be discussed at schools a lot, about inquiry, about thinking things out, about changing your mind, about being... In fact, we say that one measure of sanity is your ability to change your mind. You know what I mean by that. To, to be open enough to hear new things. And normal people who want to get married and have a family and a little house and country with chickens, that's a fixed set. And once you get that, you're dead. And once you get your house and country with chickens, your two favorite horses that you like to ride, if this is your best of all possible world, from that day forth, if you stagnate, your kids undergo change and you never understand them. Now I say, get your house and country with chickens. Get your horses, but read and listen to ideas, you see what I mean? So that you're programmed continuously, you're updated. That's why people become obsolete. They become obsolete because they arrive with a certain value system and they belong to the American Legion or the Turkish American Club. Which, what does it do? Perpetuates Turkish American values.